Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Divit and in today's video, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up Google Tag Manager. I'll talk about everything you need to know in terms of what Google Tag Manager is, why it's important, the different components of it. Then we'll create a tag from scratch together. I'll even show you how to set up variables and I'll even go through the different functions and features in your dashboard. So if all of this interests you, then stick around, subscribe, and let's get into today's video. Now, before we go ahead and get started, let's talk about the benefits of Google Tag Manager. Like, why are you watching this video? Why is it important to have Google Tag Manager? So the best way to answer that is by asking yourself, what would happen without Google Tag Manager? So let's say we didn't have this platform over here. For your website to collect and give information to Google Ads, Analytics, and Facebook, the only way you can talk to these platforms is through pieces of code these platforms give you. So Google Ad would give you a piece of code. You put that onto your website, then your website can talk to Google Ads. Google Analytics gives you a piece of code. You put it on your website. You can then talk to Google Analytics. Facebook gives you a piece of code. Website, talk to Facebook. So on and so forth. You get the idea. The list goes on and on for each platform. So you can get a pretty good idea of how this will not be scalable if you had 10 to 12 different platforms that you need to communicate with and all of this code that you need to manage. That's why Google Tag Manager is so important. It takes away all of that manual work for you. Google Tag Manager basically says, hey, I will handle all of this talking for you. Just add one piece of code, which is the Tag Manager code onto your website. And then once that's done, your website will talk to Google Tag Manager, give it all of the information, and then Google Tag Manager will connect to all of these platforms without any code and will just relay that code or information to the right people. So if your website says, hey, Google Tag Manager, connect me to Facebook and tell Facebook I had 20 signups from that platform, it will just go ahead and send that information directly to Facebook through tags and triggers, which we will talk about. So that's the beauty of Google Tag Manager. So now that we have that idea, let's go ahead and talk about the components of Google Tag Manager by checking out this illustration right here. Every Google Tag Manager account has three main components. We have tags, triggers, and variables. And this illustration that you're seeing is the best and easiest way to understand what these are. So a tag is what you create on Google Tag Manager, and it's basically telling Google Tag Manager where do you want to send information? So if your website communicates with you and you have a tag, that tag will then trigger and say, okay, thank you for this information website. I'm going to send this to Facebook. And that is basically configured when you actually create the tag. So the tag dictates where we send the information. Now the trigger dictates when to send the information, right? So do we want to send the information based on a button click? Do we want to send the information based on a page load, on a product purchase, on a form download? Whatever that trigger is to fire that tag, you set up in your triggers component. Okay, so here we can go ahead and set that up and I'll show you how to do that. And then finally, we have our variables component and our variables component basically tells us, hey, what do you want to send? Do you want to send any custom piece of information, any specific link click, any specific product page, anything that you want to send that's custom? You can attach it to a variable and send it through to the right platform. Google Tag Manager already has a bunch of pre-existing variables you can choose from, and you can even create custom variables. So that's how these three components work together. And all of these components are contained within a container. So that's basically how the Google Tag Manager account is set up. And now once we have this information in mind, now we can go to Google Tag Manager's dashboard and set it up. So to head over to Google Tag Manager, just type in tagmanager.google.com. Make sure you're signed in to a Google account. And then over here, you can go ahead and add a new account by pressing the Create New Account button if you don't have one. Once you do that, you can go ahead and set up. So you can go ahead and give your account a name. I'll just call this Meta Media. Go ahead and give your country. And then just go ahead and fill up exactly what your container name is and what the platform is. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up and then press the create option. Now, once you've created your account, this is the Google Tag Manager code that you need to put onto your website. This is the only piece of code that you need. Everything else in terms of connecting Facebook, LinkedIn, Google will all be done through Google Tag Manager. 
So let's go ahead and connect this together. Now, my particular website is on WordPress. So I'll show you how you can do this on WordPress. But if you have a Shopify website or a Wix or Squarespace website, there's different ways to doing this. But the idea is still the same. You just need to paste this code in the head section of your website. And then over here, you need to paste this code in the body section. So let me go to my back end of my WordPress website to show you how I do this. So here we are, everyone. We're in the back end of my WordPress website. And then under the plugin section over here, I pressed add new plugin. And I'm going to go ahead and install this plugin called WP Code. It's basically a plugin that allows me to go ahead and put in custom code with no coding required. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this plugin and then activate it. Once I have it activated, I'm going to go ahead and head over to their header and footer section. So over here, I have it available to me now. We can see it's activated. So I'm going to go to code snippets, header and footer. And then over here, we can see in my header and body section, I can just go ahead and paste in the code. So if I go back to my Google Tag Manager here, copy this, and then just paste it in my head section. And then the second piece of code, I just need to put it in my body section. So just copy and paste. Now, once again, depending on where your website is hosted, it might be a little bit different. But on WordPress, this is the easiest way to do it. So once you have your code done, press the Save Changes option. And now we're good to go. Now Google Tag Manager can communicate with our website. And I can go back over here. I can go ahead and test it by putting in my website and press the test option. And there we go. We can see the green check mark over here. So everything was set up correctly. And it just took me 30 seconds to do. So once you have your own Google Tag Manager code installed, just press the OK option. And then when you do that, you'll be directed to this page over here. And this is the main dashboard for Google Tag Manager. Now over here, we're going to go ahead and create our tag together from scratch. But before I do that, let's quickly navigate this dashboard so you're familiar with it. On the left over here, we have all of our different settings. We have our tags, triggers, and variables, which we talked about a second ago. All of this right here is known as your workspace. And over here, you can make a bunch of changes and see all of the changes other people also made. So we can see once we actually create changes, they will all appear here. We have a activity history. And then right here on the top right, we have this submit option. And this button basically, once you create a tag, you can publish it and make it live by pressing the submit option. If you don't press the submit option, the tag won't actually be live on your website. So it's important to note that. Similarly, we have this preview option, which basically allows you to test newly created tags to make sure that they're firing properly. Okay, so this is a great way to test it before you submit it. So once we have this understanding, we can go ahead and create our new tag by pressing this add new tag option or just going to this tag option right here. And then over here, just pressing this new option. So once you do that, you'll be directed to this page where the very first step we're going to go ahead and do is give our tag a name. Now for this example, I'm going to go ahead and connect our Google Tag Manager to our Google Analytics account. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this tag GA4. Keep it very simple. Once we have a tag name in place, we can go ahead and configure it by pressing this button. And then we can see right here all of the different platforms we can choose to connect to. There's plenty over here, guys. Like I said, that's why Tag Manager is so, so important because it allows us to connect to all of this with no code needed. So let's go all the way back to Google Analytics. Let's select that. And then over here, we're going to go ahead and select Google Tag because we basically just want to connect it on a very broad level and not necessarily on a specific event. So I'm just going to go ahead and select this option. So once we have that selected, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is give our tag ID. So your tag ID actually exists on Google Analytics, and it basically allows Google Tag Manager to identify which Google Analytics account is yours and how to communicate with it. So let's go ahead and find our analytics ID by going to our analytics account. I'm assuming you all have one. If you don't, check out my video on Google Analytics. It goes through the entire process of setting up an account. So over here, once you have your account set up, we can go to our admin option. And then right here under data collection and modification, we're going to go ahead and select data streams. And then we can see right here, this is my website. I can click it. And once I do that, this measurement ID is what I'm interested in. So I can just go ahead and copy this. And this is our unique ID for our Google Analytics account, which I can take back to my tag manager. And I can just go ahead and paste it in here. Now you could do that, but what I will show you is how you can create this as a variable. 
And by doing that, you can use this over and over again, and you never have to pull this ID again. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this for now. I'm going to press this option right here, which allows me to choose or create a variable. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and press this plus option right here, where it says variable configuration. I'm going to give my variable a name. So I'll just call it GA4 measurement ID. Okay, so this is basically the ID we are storing in this variable. Press this option right here. Scroll down to all of the different variables you can create. And we're going to go ahead and select this constant, which is basically a string. So text that you can put in that you can store. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And then right here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste the exact ID. Once we have this completed, I'll press the save option right here. And now we've created a variable. This is it right here, which we can pull over and over again. We never have to go back to Google Analytics to get that piece of ID. So once we have our variable created and our tag good to go, now we just have to set up our trigger, which tells this tag when to fire. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this option right here. And then over here, you can go ahead and choose any of these different options. So for now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is press this initialization all pages. And what this does is it basically makes sure that every time your website loads, your Google Analytics code fires properly and accurately. So you can go ahead and set that up by pressing this option right here. And then once that's set up, you can go ahead and press save. And now we've created our tag right here. Once your tag has been created, we can go ahead and press the submit option over here. So over here, it's just going to ask us if you want to have any descriptions or describe exactly what you've done. I'll just keep this blank for now. Everything I'm happy with, I can just go ahead and press the publish option. And then right here for the container version description, I'll just go ahead and say GA4 measurement ID continue. So we can see right here that it's now publishing my change. And now we're good to go. Everything that I created has been published and it's available to me right here. So if I go back to my workspace, you can repeat the exact same process for all kinds of different tags. And we can see that the changes are available here. This is the live version with some of the changes I have made. Now that basically is in a nutshell, the process of how you can create different tags. This was a very simple process. You can make it much more complicated with a lot more complicated triggers, variables, and tags. So on that note, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope now you have a pretty decent understanding of how to navigate Google Tag Manager. And if you like this video, then press the subscribe button and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in more content like this, then check out my video on Google Ads or Facebook Ads, where I really dive into those platforms and show you how you can market your products or services. That being said, everybody, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.